ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا بعث الله رحمه للعالمين فنصلي عليه في الاولين وفي الاخرين وفي الملء الاعلى يا رب العالمين اوصيكم نفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل كما جاء في محكم التنزيل يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون Dear brothers and sisters, we begin with praise and gratitude as that is the essence of what it means to be a person of faith. Because we have realized the creator of our heart and his constant, persistent favors and blessings that he has put into us and around us, and so we thank him. And Islam, to submit, to surrender one's own ego and desires to God is the ultimate responsibility we all carry. So I want to talk to you about the concept of faith and belief as it relates to true levels of confidence and surety in who we are and what we represent. When you say faith or belief in the modern English vernacular, secular language, you will find in the dictionaries and in the attitudes of people that it is some sort of misplaced confidence in something that there really isn't any evidence to prove it. This is the concept we find in the modern world. And that is going to be true for those who just follow the religion of their family and society blindly. Then it would be true. Because if your reason for being Muslim is because my parents or my society is Muslim, or the reason why you are whatever is because of your parents and your society, that does not make that religion correct. A believer in the Islamic doctrine, as we know Iman in Arabic, which means to give safety and security to one's existence. Iman, Amina. This Iman will only, this faith and this belief will only be complete when someone looks to find the proofs and the evidence, searching the evidence and searching one's heart and looking into the message and adopting it based upon conviction to ratify this as my way of life because of what I know about it and the evidence that it's based upon. Only then will the strength of faith and the dignity of identity as a believer flourish. When our faith is rooted in solid evidence, we can truly begin to work for God and His message. This message is what we find in the end of Surah Hud, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ وَجَاءَكَ فِي هَذِهِ الْحَقُّ وَمَوْعِظَةٌ وَذِكْرَى لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَقُلْ لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ اَعْمَلُوا عَلَى مَكَانَتِكُمْ إِنَّا عَامِلُونَ وَانْتَظِرُوا إِنَّا مُنْتَظِرُونَ وَلِلَّهِ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَإِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُ الْأَمْرُ كُلُّهُ فَاعْبُدُهُ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ So in the end of Surah Hud, Allah is telling the Prophet Wasallam and the believers, we have told you in the royal we, the majestic plural, where one is talking in dominion and greatness over all others. We have sent you down these messages of so many prophets in great detail. So it could give fortitude to your heart. And what has come in this message is the truth and a reminding admonishment and for those who believe. 
So tell those who choose not to believe. Go ahead and work for what you believe you're working for. We are working for what we are working for. The message that we know to be true. Wait for the appointed time when we will all die and be resurrected and we are waiting with you. God is the one who knows and has control over all of the unseen in the heavens and the earth. And to Him return all affairs. So worship Him and serve Him alone and put your trust in Him. And your Lord has never been heedless of what you or they are doing. A person of faith should stand out in moral leadership. That's for everybody. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever pleases God, even though people might not like it, God will strengthen that person to where they don't need the people. And in another narration, He will make the people like that person and they will respect what it is that he or she is doing. But whoever displeases God, seeking acceptance with the people, then God will authorize those people over that person seeking their acceptance. So we find ourselves with a lot of pressure in the society that we live in. The Prophet ﷺ has been narrated to say, and many of the companions confirm this, don't any one of you, the Muslims, his followers, don't any one of you be a follower. That you just follow the people saying, I go along with the people. If the people are doing good, I join them in doing good. And if people start doing bad, you go along with them and you join them in that. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ said, struggle and strive and make it your standard that when people do wrong, you never join them and you stand against it. But that all goes back to faith. What do you know is right? And from where did you get that knowledge? <coughs> See, we're being brainwashed that people decide what's right and what's wrong. Whatever is popular is what's right. And what's wrong is whatever people have decided is wrong. The problem with that is human beings are not miraculous. We all admit to our flaws as human beings. And we keep evolving and changing our ideas. And so that's not a reliable foundation. That is why God sent prophets with miracles to prove that what they are living by and teaching and the message they came with is reliable foundation for you to put your faith in. You see, this is what we talk about in the difference between integration and assimilation. It is the prophetic model for all prophets, as we have said time and time again, to integrate. What does that mean? That means I'm one of my people. I'm an American, I live here, or you have chosen to live here. You're raising your kids here. They are American by default. And we are one among the American people. But as an integrated people, we have our own identity based in our own faith by which we will decipher how we will live our life. Assimilate means we just become like everybody else and we don't have distinguishing characteristics that we are known by. The famous hadith of the strangers we talked about. So, if people want you to assimilate, then they are actually not liberal freedom human rights supporters because they're telling you to compromise who you are for their pleasure which is not freedom and not human rights. It's not constitutionally American. Actually, we should be very dignified and proud and happy to live as believers in this society. But we must not do it on the terms of living somewhere else and what we got used to as a societal norm over there, because then we'll create conflicts that are not needed and against the prophetic model. In which they said, إِلَىٰ أَخَاهُمْ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ to their brother, they said, my people. We didn't send them someone outside of their tribe to come to them and say, yeah, we're the people who know, we're gonna come to you as foreigners and change your way like the foreigner. Rather they said, be as you are, we're gonna come give you values that will help you regulate your society. 
much of what you are doing will be emphasized in good because we have fitrah. And that we're all basing much of our life on that. But many of the things you will have fell victim to your own desires and the work of Satan, and you have to know your inner need to fight back. And that's the value of revelation. So that's why in Surah An'am, قُلْ أَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ أَتَّخِذُ وَلِيًّا فَاطِرِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Tell the people, why should I take any other than God as my guardian when He's the creator of the heavens and the universe? Every atom and every creation and every living being is functioning according to His plan and His will and that's what gave it its beauty and its functionality. So who should I take as a guardian and as a guide to my lifestyle and behavior other than that same entity? Why would that make any sense? Of course, we must seek God's help. And at the same time, while we're doing it, we put in our ultimate effort to achieve what we're trying to achieve. The Prophet said, Indeed, God blames people only when they don't put in the work. When people are lazy and they expect some divine support, when they don't work for it. If a situation overcomes you, then he says, say, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Sufficient is God for me, and He is the best of the guardians. This is the attitude of the believer. The Prophet has taught us what it means in his example. In so many situations in his life, you saw that it looked like for sure he will be destroyed, and there's no way his religion will continue, much less become some great, huge legacy of world history expanding across the world. And that's where the Prophet وسلم, he told us, If you preserve all that you know is sacred from God and His revelation, He will preserve you. And you will find Him with you. Spend time in closeness to God, even in times of comfort and ease. When everything's good, okay, you should be in a state of remembrance and gratitude and praise. You should be praying more prayers. If you are only praying and seeking His help when things go wrong, then you are using Him, as we say. And you are not truly knowing Him and being connected to Him. He said, if you're going to ask from someone, ask from God first. If you're going to seek someone's help, seek help from God first. Because if the whole world gathered together to benefit you or harm you, they wouldn't be able to do anything unless He allowed it. Meaning, the one you are praying to, the one you are seeking His help, you will see amazing feats, as we saw in the life of the Prophet wasallam, happen. The Prophet wasallam, on many occasions, for example, probably the best example, is whenever, many people have the story wrong, when he came back from Ta'if, and he is sitting outside of Mecca, many people tell this story wrong, just so you know, we're going to fix it for you. And he's sitting outside of Mecca after being humiliated and abused and attacked. And him and all of his followers are in a very tough situation. And at this point, maybe there's 200 Muslims. And they're all living in poverty and decrepit state of oppression and abuse and humiliation. And it looks like they're all about to end. He was, his last hope was to go to Ta'if. And they threw rocks at him and mocked him and ridiculed him. He had to run away. He had bruises and bloody feet from when they were throwing rocks at him. So it wasn't at Ta'af, he comes back. There are no mountains at Ta'af, if you know Saudi Arabia. He comes back to Mecca and he, the angel, Gabriel, brings the angel of the mountains and says, if God wills, if you would like, he will cause these mountains to destroy them. The Prophet said, 
No, I would rather that hopefully one day my prayer is that they would become believers later. At that moment, that prayer seems absolutely ridiculous. Just like many other occasions in the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba's life, if you read it, your faith will rise, that is one of the big proofs. They knew God and He was with them. They were truly connected. They truly believed. They were not concerned about what anybody thought except for God and His Messenger ﷺ. So then, 10 years later, all the people of Mecca become Muslim. Absolutely amazing. Allahu Akbar. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا فَإِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى أهل وصحبه أجمعين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he summed up the whole sermon today in one hadith. He said, the strong believer is better, is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. And then all of them is good. So if you want to be a strong believer, then work and strive for what truly benefits you. And do not waver. Don't be weak or lazy. Don't say inshallah and then don't do anything. Don't be that broken believer. Be that strong, fortified believer. If anything afflicts you, don't say, well, if I would have done this, or I would have done that, then it would have happened in this way. Rather say, قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعْلُ What God has decreed happens as He willed it. Because if you say if about this and that, it opens the door for Satan. What we are taught in this hadith, is that secret of the Prophet and his companion's success. So what you might say, I've heard you say this before, there are many secrets. It's all of the guidance. This is one major aspect. See, you will think that, well, if I'm very clearly a believer and I stick to this and I reassess my lifestyle, my manners and my character, and I start to change, some people will think I'm crazy or something. Or people will not like me. What we saw with the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, that at first, everybody did not like them in the whole city of Mecca. And they abused them, and ridiculed them, and humiliated them. If he was not the Prophet ﷺ, and if those people didn't have real faith and strong faith and dignity in who they were, then they would have tried to go along with whatever the Meccans want from them. And they would not have stuck to who they are. And we would not all be sitting here right now. So if you're talking about where you stand with God and what you expect to happen on the Day of Judgment, and what you would hope to be in this world after you leave it as a result of what you have done, the Prophet ﷺ is advising us, be a strong believer. Now, some people think that a strong believer is someone who makes Islam something incompatible with all things that are normal. Or it needs to be rigid and judgmental and harsh. That is a wrong believer because it goes against the lofty example of the Prophet ﷺ, who was kind and gentle and easygoing. He understood people's circumstances. He was welcoming to them. He embraced them. He did not say, look, I'm Prophet and I'm so holy and me and Abu Bakr are so great and you guys are all terrible people. How dare you come into our mosque like this? They were very welcoming. They understood spirituality is a delicate process that takes time. A strong believer is one that has no arrogance, particularly in religion. Because the religion is not ours. It is God's. And the only one to truly live it perfectly were the prophets. The rest of us are going to come up short. So a strong believer 
is someone who knows and struggles and strives the example of the Prophet And they're working towards what benefits them. What does that mean? That means if you're going to spend long parts of your day doing something, make sure that there will be some value and benefit you or someone else gains through that. If we review what we're doing with our lives and our days, and how, what kind of conversations we indulge in with people, we will see there's a lot of room for improvement. This doesn't mean that the believer never enjoys themselves and has entertainment. The Prophet ﷺ and his companions would often laugh and learn about, say, jokes and learn about the poetry and say things about poetry. And they would race and they would wrestle and they would do all kind of things. But that was the exception to the norm. The, the society today is telling us it's all about entertainment. Your whole life is about being entertained and having fun and being cool and accepted by the people who are all having fun. A believer is about being accepted by God and getting close and loving the Prophet ﷺ and preparing to die. Because we're going to die and we don't know when that will happen and we want to be ready for it. So the strong believer doesn't say if too much or at all. Because why? They were working as hard as they could to make sure what they know is best and what they know is right will happen. And if it didn't, they were humble enough to know that they are not the Lord of affairs and the decreer of what happens. And they respect the one who has that right. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, we ask you to strengthen our hearts. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us a people of strength and dignity in our faith. Ya Allah, help us to be those who are seeking your pleasure and contentment, not those who are seeking the pleasure and contentment of other than you. Ya Allah, help us to understand what it means to be true monotheists, who are devoted to you and service to you. Ya Allah, help us to understand the model of the Prophet ﷺ and revive it amongst ourselves. Ya Allah, help us to become an integrated, respected entity for the contributions and values we offer as Muslims following Islam. Ya Allah, help us to be a people of dignity and nobility, known for moral uprightness that do not cower in the face of other people's expectations. Ya Allah, give us strength Give us fortitude, give us perseverance, give us the means that we need to succeed in this life and in eternity. Ya Allah, protect us and preserve us from the plight and the fight of the devil and all of his allies and those who work with him. Ya Allah, we ask you to bring greatness and dignity to the Islam and the Muslims once again and to remove the greatness and dignity from people who disgrace you and all good morality. Ya Allah, we ask your forgiveness. Ya Allah, we have been weak. Ya Allah, we have been lazy. Well, ya Allah, we are poor. We seek strength and richness in you. Ya Allah, forgive us for all of our sins and make us a means to the solutions of the world. Ya Allah, help us to be balanced and understanding our beloved Prophet wasallam as he truly was and don't allow us to become extreme in our love and strength and faith to you. Wa aqimu salat.